every year, this time of year, you're you're seeing certain teams that have really good vibes that head into the season with a head of steam and others that have really, really bad vibes. And you go, man, things are kind of collapsing there. You want to avoid those. And they end up being pretty relevant for fantasy. So you want to check out today's episode where we're talking about which players and which teams have good vibes and ba bad vibes heading into the 2019 season. Hey, Foot Clan, there is still time to get into the 2019 Megala Bowl yeah. Tournament. Oi! <laughs> this year's winner not only gets the honor of being the Megala Bowl champion and all that comes with it, but you win a coveted 2020 Listener League spot and a personal invitation to join us for a wild card Saturday here at the studio. All you got to do is support the show at jointhefoot.com. Head in there, click the link, and you'll be in the 2019 Megala Bowl Tournament. Check it all out at jointhefoot.com. And Foot Clan, the fantasy footballers, are sponsored by ADT. Real protection from ADT is personalized, smart home security with a system that fits your unique needs and safeguards your home with a rapid connection to first responders 24-7 Take ADT peace of mind with you on the go with the ADT Go app. It features location sharing, safe driving reports, and emergency SOS button. That's real protection. That's ADT. To learn more, visit ADT.com slash podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Do, 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 do. That was nice. I felt the power. I had some requests. I was due for a longer intro, is all. I mean, people have expectations. Well, you've got extra oxygen today. I do? I'm just, I'm just you're trying to figure out the mystery. You're speculating? Yes. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Excited to be with you Tuesday, August 27th. Hope you enjoyed the live show, which was yesterday's podcast. We had a good time in Phoenix with the Andrew Luck news breaking moments before the live show with the uh, smattering of Colts fans wearing Colts jerseys searching for the meaning of life. And we're excited to be with you today. We've got good vibes, bad vibes on the show today. A great quick question. So much going on. So excited to get into the season. We just had our one of our big drafts, our League of Record draft here in the studio. That was Sunday evening. It was a great time. Mike was paying, paying the iron price for his oh, food, yes. food decisions. <laughs> Look, when, you, when you're on a pretty strict regimen and then... <laughs> Draft Sunday shows up and Oregano's deep dish pizza is there. All bets are off. Hashtag not a sponsor. Um, <laughs> yes. But delicious. Mike, worth it? On Sunday it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so strange when you do those things because while you're eating it, totally worth it. The next day when you're uh, frequenting other places of the home, not not so much. Yeah, yeah. Welcome in. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. You can head over to YouTube. Subscribe. Click the bell. We just built out a whole new wheel of water payout uh, set, would yes. you call it? So we make water bets on the show all the time. We filmed the watering that happened at our live draft which mm -hmm. happened to Jason, it happened to Brooks, it happened to one other co-owner. It was spectacular because it didn't happen to me. Because it I, takes three people to... Takes a village to, to, to finish to that bomb poorly. A, to bomb a super <laughs> a suit, team. When you have a true super team, watch out. When we, yep. we, also, <laughs> we also passed an initiative at this draft. Oh, yes. to, uh, so the tradition in our league of record, traditions are great, is that if you finish dead last... You, every single owner in the league spins the wheel of water and they douse the owner that finished last and they draft wet. The whole draft soaking wet. We passed the new initiative to upgrade that. The loser of each season will now have a custom-made turtleneck. Wool. Wool turtleneck. Turtleneck sweater. <laughs> with their losing roster printed on it 
The watering will happen to them in the turtleneck. They will have to draft in the turtleneck. It will be a great deterrent to tanking. So I can only hope somehow, some way, all, yeah, of, we, your, all we, of your players get hurt, Jason. We have a bit of a tanking problem in our league where you have to, you know. Tank is a, is a dirty word. It's people investing in the future. It's right, a, It's a keeper league, so all people right. invest in their future. You want to win, you got to go hard. Uh, quick question of the day. W name a player that is currently being drafted at their ADP floor. So a player that you look at right now, where they're being drafted, they can't. That's the worst case scenario for them. So this uh, upside picks would be another way to say this. I had two names that came to mind when I look at the board. One of which I thought took place during our League of Record draft. That was Adrian Peterson. I think Adrian Peterson being drafted in most, le most leagues is the 10th round. We got late in our draft, and I looked to my co-owner, and I said, is, is Adrian Peterson still here? Because you're, you were past even the, the Peyton Barber era of drafting running backs. So I think Adrian Peterson has some upside in the 10th round if guys – gets himself hurt, which is a possibility, doesn't have a lot of carries. The other player I think is Jared Cook. When I look really? at the, when I look at the tight end landscape hmm. and I see Jared Cook in the seventh round, I really don't think he could I don't think his fantasy finish outcome can get much worse than drafting him in the seventh round. So um he's kind of in the same range as Vance McDonald, who I think has a wider range of outcomes because we haven't seen a season where he has finished in that upper echelon yet. So for me, those are the two picks that I have. I'm, you know, yeah. Do you, I, do you agree with them? Do you disagree? I, I'm with you on Adrian Peterson. I think that that's, he's a great value pick. Jared Cook, it's a little bit tougher because, yeah, he's the seventh round, but he's also the seventh tight end off the board. And I, I see Jared Cook's range of outcomes as, as very high. I mean, he could slip in there. At, he could be – somehow the fifth tight end at the end of the season. But I also think that he can slip outside of the top 12. I, I lean more that he will be a good fantasy tight end, a stabilizing force for you. But he's going to have plenty of games where you're you're mad at Jared Cook. Yeah, I, I have Jared Cook right now as my tight end 10. So he's still he's still a tight end one, but that would, that would be beyond that range of outcomes. I had two players that came to mind as well. One I've talked about recently, one of which was – snaked from me by you Mike or we oh. could say lizarded from me <laughs> by you Mike the yes Sammy Watkins I, I just the lizard king I get it and you could you could say well that's not his floor his floor is he's injured for you know 75 percent of the season and his floor is he's wide receiver 100 but he's the wide receiver 42 right now and when he's when he's played with Pat Mahomes he's always you know a a, a playable startable Fantasy option, the ceiling is higher. The other player uh, is Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders right now is the running back 27. That's the rookie running back drafted very high draft capital for the Eagles. Historically, they do not spend high draft capital on running backs. They did this year on Miles Sanders after realizing that the, the Corey Clement and Josh Adams, they're like, okay, okay, I get it. Like, we, we don't need to pay up for running backs, but we need to, like, we need to not scrape the bottom of the barrel. We don't need to be playing undrafted free agents. Exactly. So they got Miles Sanders. Now he's in a timeshare. So let's say he stays in a timeshare the whole year. Right now he's the running back 27. I look back at last year. Who were the running backs that finished right there around 27? It, Matt Burita, Mark Ingram, TJ Yeldon. Those are guys in a timeshare. They weren't the lead dog of their team. And that's where Miles Sanders is being drafted right now is at his worst case scenario where he's splitting the load. If he gets it to the moon. Can I give a Miles Sanders PSA? Because right now we're at the point where on Twitter uh, where you can follow Mike at FF Hitman. Jason, you can follow at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. <clears throat> we have been sent a lot of screenshots of your teams. And uh, you want us to evaluate them and say whether they look good They're or all not. looking great. That's not the PSA. The PSA is that Miles Sanders, I've seen Miles Sanders as the RB2 on a number of rosters. And I just want to say I love Miles Sanders, the talent. I love the opportunity. 
I love where I think he'll be three, four weeks into the season. I don't feel exceptional about Miles Sanders in week one or week two. I think it's going to take time to let the, you know, pour all the running backs into the, the filter and then, you know, it's going to take a couple weeks for, for them to come out the bottom. And Miles Sanders will come out on top. But I don't feel amazing about Miles Sanders in the early, early part of the year. So hey, when you're, you're making flex decisions, keep that in mind. I love Miles Sanders, but it's a, it's a long season. And week one, I'm not positive that the workload's going to be there. Darren Sproles and, and Jordan Howard, et cetera. Yeah, if, you, if you're one of those teams where Miles Sanders is right now, he's your starting running back too. Go check your waiver wire for the Tony Pollards and the Justin Jacksons of the world. because Just like, in case. Just in That's case. That's a better week one start if Zeke is out to go start Tony Pollard. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. And, and then you're loaded. And it's, it, it, you know, I was uh, with my trainer yesterday, and he had a buddy there that was talking about his draft, and he had just trash running backs. It, you know, and I was, he, he had Gio Bernard as, like, and I was like, Dude, go see if Tony Pollard or, or you know Justin Jackson are there. They were both there. Go scoop them up. Uh, and I would say for Miles Sanders, I get the concern for we for week one and week two. He is my running back two in the league of record. I don't feel comfortable with it. <laughs> the nice thing in his favor, though, is Jordan Howard, who is kind of presumed that he would be fighting for time against. Jordan Howard is also new to that team, so this is not. The rookie running back, even though he's a second rounder, he has to come in and beat out an established veteran in that team. So, I would also expect to see some of the other running backs cut this week: Josh Adams, Corey Clement, Darren Sproles, right. Will Smallwood. Some of those players, I believe, will be. Uh, what you got? Danell Pumphrey still there? You still have? Wow, he's still there. I think so. Yeah. Well, I think so. As of very, yesterday, he was. So, couple more days. I think you're going to see it. You know. The blurry vision will become sure. clear. So I I'll, did see he was your your running back too, Mike. But you're in the Melvin Gordon boat. Yeah. So you yeah have, he's not supposed to be. No, he's not supposed to be. Mike, who do you, who do you have as your player being drafted at their floor? I apologize for the Eagles love fest, but I think Alshon Jeffrey is being drafted at his floor. Looking at a guy who's going right around the wide receiver twenty nine spot, and Alshon Jeffrey, two years ago was an absolute touchdown machine. He hit nine. And what people don't remember at this point is his shoulder was wrecked that entire season. He played through it. He had to get surgery at the end of the season, and that was his uh, lowest yards per game since his rookie season. His catch percentage was a putrid 47.5%. Meanwhile, uh, his last year in Chicago, he uh, was averaging 68 yards a game. Last year for Philadelphia, 64 yards a game. People are forgetting – Alshon Jeffrey, because there's so many magical toys for Philadelphia with, with Zach Ertz, possibly the emergence of Dallas Goddard. D Jax. And D Jax. Aguilar. Alshon Jeffrey is still the wide White receiver. Side. Jeffrey's still the wide receiver one on this team. And, and like until further notice, it's just shocking to me that someone with his upside and floor isn't even being drafted as a wide receiver two. Well, to your <clears throat> to your point. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 29, only played 13 games last year, finished as the wide receiver 26. In the 13 games. Exactly. Right. In, so the that, yeah. in the 13 games. He would, he would have easily passed 1,000 yards last year. If you want a signed Alvin Kamara jersey, we want to give, you, we want to give you one. Fantastic. We would love to give you a signed Alvin Kamara jersey. You can do that at footclangiveaway.com. There are a couple of free ways to enter. Um, he's a very good player. You can get on the loop 101. You can get on the loop 202. <laughs> the I-10. What are you talking about? Uh, what are There's you a talking couple about? free ways to enter this draft. Oh. That was a Mike Wright wow. special. Oh, Brooks nice is grimacing. We need, the, we need the sound effect, Andy, for that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I will. Someone see, out there was with me. No Seriously, one was with you. You're here. It was terrible. <laughs> Please stay with us for the remainder of the show. It will only get better. The attempt, I love it. The problem with if that was a Mike Wright special, you had to get in right away. Yeah, you, you would have had to jump in immediately. You, you could have you also, let the timing lapse. You also could have gone with some more like you know. You use very local freeways. You could have, you could like, have gone Route 66. Yeah. You could have gone. <laughs> Something that would have been tangible and noticeable for others. That's Route 66 true. would have stuck the landing. But the, the yeah. loops are the, they're local to a lot of different places. 
They not really. the same loop. Yeah. No. There's a lot of loop. Yeah, there's a lot of loop on ones out there. Oh. Jump on I-45. Yeah, none of that will make that joke land. <laughs> UltimateDraftKit.com, if you've got your draft coming up, um, one of the nights this week. I've got a couple going on right now. This weekend's going to be busy. I, I got think- my Money League draft this weekend. <laughs> Do you? Yep. How's that going to go? It's going to go amazing. <laughs> Better, uh, better than last year, hopefully. UltimateDraftKit.com if you want to check that out. And then we have another article, a brand new article on the website I want to bring to your attention <laughs> because it's it's the, <laughs> it's the most footballer's article possible. But there is an article now, 55 fantasy stats only the fantasy footballers could bring you. Kyle Borgogan, our editor-in-chief, put together 55 fantasy stats. <laughs> This is the most ridiculous article of all time. It and, really and is. And it's incredible. It is a good article. So um, without further ado, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. If I didn't say it before, we're going to be talking about some good vibes, bad vibes, as we head into the season, teams that we're excited about or now feeling uncomfortable with. Let's jump into the news first. The Patriots have activated Josh Gordon from the NFI list. They released Maurice Harris. This offseason, right now, it's Josh Gordon who is practicing, who is activated, and should be on the field in week one, and it is Julian Edelman. Rob Gronkowski is retired. There was some news this morning, interview with Rob Gronkowski, him saying he needs that kind of fire in his life what he's missing with football. Didn't say he was ready to come back. Didn't say he wasn't coming back. So if you've got a deep bench on a dynasty league, on a dynasty league, you can put him on there. I wouldn't. Would you hold him in a dynasty? I am holding him in a dynasty. I have him in our dynasty league. You still haven't dropped him. Yes, because every time I've stared down what I can pick up in lieu of Rob Gronkowski's hypothetical return, I, it hasn't been worthwhile to me. Who would, do you, I, who do, would you rather have? Jacoby Myers on the same team. Well, see, I already have him, Jason. Well, okay, for people that don't have just, <laughs> you know. Jacoby Myers. I would rather have Jacoby okay. Myers. But we, when you look at do I want, you know, Teddy Bridgewater on my on my dynasty team or Gromkowski, I'd rather just wait this year out. I don't see the upside of somebody. So it's dependent on your league and who's available, obviously. Is he going to come back this year? Probably not. Could he for a playoff run? Absolutely, if they needed him. I think that is possible. Whether you play him or not in fantasy, who knows? But Josh Gordon, let's talk about him. If he's starting the season, talk about a guy getting drafted at his floor right now. Nobody wanted to make well, the Well, he, he's all over the place where I've seen him go very early. I've seen him slip in drafts. Uh, I talked about him just last week that if you haven't done your draft yet, I mean, these online systems, you got to take advantage of that because Josh Gordon might be way lower on the list than he actually should be, and you have to either highlight that player, make a mental note, write something down so you remember that once it hits that sixth round, you need to scoop Josh Gordon up because he's a, he's a steal in the sixth round. And how do you feel like he would affect Julian Edelman in any way? He's To me, he helps Julian Edelman because it – because I want the offense better. I think Josh Gordon will help sustain drives. He doesn't take target volume away from, from Jules. All right, the Athletics' Jay Morrison believes A.J. Green returning for week three would be the, quote, best-case scenario for A.J. Green. It is not the best-case scenario for fantasy owners, and we don't know what his health will be like when he returns if it's week three, week four. But he has much like your Sammy Watkins argument, Jason, whenever he's healthy, whenever he's on the field, he's an elite wide receiver. The difference being he's currently injured. He's 31 years old and has been injured the last two years. I am more of the mindset that we're seeing the beginning of the end for Alshon Jeffrey uh, or for A.J. Green here. And, um, you know, it, I, I hope he comes back and dominates. He was injured last year but dominated when he was on the field. I mean, it's just a matter of, um, you know, your your roster construction and whether you want to take the gamble that when he comes back, he's not going to re-aggravate something. Um, I'm staying clear of A.J. Green this season. You don't have to. 
Jason Garrett said Amari Cooper is unscheduled to play week one. We also heard Sterling Shepard, good to go for week one. Jay Gruden expects Jordan Reed to be ready for week one. That's interesting. So the concussion concern for Reed, but expected to be on the field week one. Uh, any thoughts on those guys? I mean, Reed has been my favorite or one of my favorites uh, late round tight ends if you punt the position completely because you know if Reed is on the field, he's heavily involved in this passing game. They they don't really have a choice in Washington. So if if he is actually ready, going to be ready for week one, then, then I'm more apt to draft him. Um, Case Keenum was named the starter for the Redskins, so it will be Case Keenum to Jordan Hooray! Reed. Hooray! No longer willing to draft <laughs> Jordan Reed. Dante Pettis is battling a minor groin injury on top of all mm. of the... I thought he was battling a, a roster injury. He probably got that in the fourth quarter of the preseason He's, game. He has a strained ego right now. It's like when they made uh, Antonio Callaway play. The, the Cleveland Browns forced Callaway to play that entire preseason game. And run nine and routes. Then, weird, he got hurt afterwards. So this uh, Dante Pettis motivational tactic. Not, Mike is not a fan. No. Uh, Kiki QT returned to practice on Monday. That's excellent news. Excellent news for the Houston Texans. Kenyon Drake back at practice. Albert Wilson running at full speed. Albert Wilson, such a dynamic player. Still hard for me to believe Like after that much time off and that major of an injury, he's going to be the same guy. But, hey. Are you willing to, to take him with the last round pick? No. Okay, so he's you're not drafting him at all. I'll I'll click if you're on a platform that has a little eyeball button next to your players on the waiver wire. I can I'll keep my eyeball on him. Yeah, I think he's a decent. Best just player. just one of my eyeballs though, not both. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. It's really scary when you do use one of your eyes. Just to one at, yeah, to always watch to Albert Wilson. Way. Um, yeah, in a best ball league, I like taking him as a flyer at the end of the draft. Anthony Miller back at practice, and it's a sad day, guys. I mean, I. Oh. oh, no. The Raiders. So sad. Don't we have a jingle bell somewhere? Well, this is a goodbye, Mike. And when Krampus retires from football, which is coming soon, <laughs> Doug Martin's been released by the Raiders. The kids are safe again. The kids are safe. <laughs> and that was today's news and notes. Check out the <laughs> Sleeper app. Not just breaking the best fantasy football news, but also the best fantasy football <laughs> platform. <laughs> And we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And uh, we want to thank today's sponsor, Muggsy Jeans. Getting a good pair of jeans, well, it's a lot better than having Doug Martin on your roster. I'll tell you that. That's the truth. It's more like one of my patented 90-yard touchdown runs from when I was a flag football player. You remember that? That's oh. not the truth. Nine yards. Sorry, those are yeah, yes. nine-yard runs. Look, Muggsy Jeans are the most comfortable jeans ever made. No exaggeration. Look, they are real jeans that literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. I own no other jeans. Someone said, hey, thank you for recommending Muggsy on Twitter the other day. I said, really not hard. I had them before they were a sponsor. They uh, have outfitted my entire closet. I don't have anything else. I just got my order in this morning. Did you? Yeah. The magic is the proprietary fabrics, Jason. I'm thrilled. It's proprietary. A blend of high-tech materials. When I tried them on, I did not want to wear anything else, and so I don't. They come in a stylish fit that's not too baggy, not too tight. You look better than you feel. They're so confident that you'll love them. They offer free USA shipping and returns, so your comfort's 100% guaranteed. Do your legs a favor. Grab your own pair of the jeans that are sweeping the nation by heading to Muggsy.com using the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. M-U-G-S-Y.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. And with the return of fantasy football, that means that FanDuel is back. FanDuel has more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every game, every week. You never played on FanDuel fantasy football before? Great, because new users are going to get $5, a free $5 bonus with their first deposit. FanDuel is amazing. Look, when you're in the draft and you don't get certain players because of your draft position, FanDuel is the perfect way to get exposure to those players. Do you know that Julio Jones is going to go off this week? You can get him on FanDuel. And with FanDuel, you can pick a new team every week. Injuries don't end the season. Plus, with the FanDuel app, you can bet anytime, anywhere, no matter how you like to play. There's a contest for you. Tournaments, beat the score, single game, mini, labs, and more. 
Get in on the action anywhere you want. Sign up for FanDuel now. Get that $5 bonus when you're with your first deposit of at least $5. Go to FanDuel.com slash footballers or download the FanDuel app and see why FanDuel is the way more than just fantasy sports. That's FanDuel.com slash footballers. Good vibrations. I love that. Ooh. That was great. Very well pronounced as well. <laughs> yes. Good. Vibrations. <laughs> All right. We're going to go through some good vibes, bad vibes. It's been a long off season, training camp, preseason games. So we'll start. We'll start with the good. Let's start Ooh. with the good. My good vibes right now, it's the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Mm -hmm. Because in an offseason where regression has been the narrative for Patrick Mahomes, I think the Chiefs might just be the same or better in 2019. Last year, first in yards, third in passing yards, number one in points by points per game by a wide margin they were 35 and uh, some decimal point points per game and <laughs> I look they've looked wonderful in the preseason it seems like they're going to be the same if not better Damian Williams looks great mm -hmm. Darwin Thompson looks like another weapon for the offense Sammy Watkins the Lizard King is healthy right now that's great news McCall Hardman, the rookie, the second-round draft pick. Very fast. There were plays, you know, this last game. You know who took the top off the defense on those plays? It wasn't just Tyreek Hill. It was McCall Hardman running from the slot, taking the defense upfield while Tyreek Hill turns on his jets and runs a 30-yard deep out and is just wide open. It's really not fair. It's, you you said that when we watched the game, we go. How do you stop? How do you them? stop? Here's here's what I saw. Right, they were they were taking the top off, going long. Right, then the next couple plays, they come out and they basically have four of the fastest humans in the world run as fast as possible right at you, but then they stopped short, and the defense was just the defense was thirty yards down the field, and Pat Mahomes is just like, here's a quick little pass, ten yards wide open. I could do this all day, and I'm like. How do you possibly stop? You need like 15 defenders because you got to have guys short. You got to have guys long. Can we get that instituted? Uh, yeah, just against the Chiefs. Yeah. I prefer not to, and I, I like offense. So good vibes around the Chiefs. MVP of football. This is not to say that I think Patrick Mahomes is a guarantee to throw 50 touchdowns again, but he just might. He just might do it. So that wheel route. My goodness, the the different options that they have to pick you apart. Chiefs look really, really good. The vibes, very, very good. When the offseason started, you know, Oof. they didn't have McCall Hardman. They didn't look like they had Tyreek Hill, and you wondered what was going to happen. It just has they lost Kareem Hunt. Yeah. It was like the yeah. vibes were not good in Kansas City, so it's certainly turned around. So, yeah. Um, so that was my – that's my good vibes candidate. Who wants to go next? My good vibes candidate – is the New York Jets. Mm. They have really changed my opinion of them this offseason, this preseason. Uh, you know, not every team is playing as starters. Obviously, we haven't seen Love Bell out there, uh, but the team, and specifically Sam Darnold, I mean, he has just looked great. His accuracy, his decision-making, his mobility within the pocket to just – evade pressure they've been working with you know not their starting week one offensive line and he's been under pressure at times and the way that he has just professionally just stepped to the side stepped up I mean he looks like Big Ben in there just with the little you know three yard movement within the pocket and then just dropping dimes to Chris Herndon, who I think is going to be special he's as the gonna year be goes a, on. He's going to be a great waiver wire pickup. Robbie Anderson has looked good, and the offensive line in the run game has also looked pretty solid. It's it's given me hope. They haven't even had their uh, starting center come coming back out of retirement. 
just to play for the Jets. So I, the vibes are good right now. I am believing more in the capability of them taking a big step forward this season. I'm not necessarily projecting that in my rankings because it's all probability. But before, I, I didn't see that being an option. Right now, I think this is they could really surprise. I mean, there's always teams in the NFL that go from you know last to first in a division, and they're not going to. But uh, <laughs> they could obviously they could get to an Adam Gaze style nine and seven finish, certainly. which is what he did in Miami. Yeah. Okay, Mike. Uh, good vibes. Well, your New York Jets, they may have some trouble because they're in division with the Patriots and my good vibes team. I'm throwing out the Buffalo Bills. The Bills, they already had an incredibly solid defense. Last year on a yards-per-game basis, they were number two behind only the Baltimore Ravens. And now, with the addition of Cole Beasley and John Brown, Josh Allen, yes, I'm praising Josh Allen, it looks like he's making the decision that he doesn't have to chuck the ball deep every single play. He can say, all right, Cole Beasley, he's open short. I will actually go to him. He, he was a target machine in that preseason week two. And people forget how good John Brown actually was with Joe Flacco. In the games that Joe Flacco was the starter, John Brown was gonna, he was going to hit over 1,000 yards easy by the end of the season. Lamar Jackson came in. Everything pretty much imploded for John Brown and the rest of the Baltimore wide receivers. But Brown is still an excellent field stretcher. And like, I, think, I think Zay Jones is the most underrated wide receiver on that team. I think Zay, Zay Jones, Jones will, as well. He'll it's, be a starter and he'll be more consistent than John Brown. I was going to bring him up where you had those final five games when Josh Allen was actually tearing it up for fantasy football. Zay Jones was averaging essentially nine targets a game. And they have... And Robert Foster, who was a he was pretty sensational a few games. He can't even get on the field. And then the other part of the offense, Shady McCoy and Frank Gore. It was only it was only one game, but they looked excellent and like revitalized. And if if this team can be who they want, where the defense is excellent and actually get the running game going, I think that the Buffalo Bills will surprise more than the New York Jets. I think the I think Buffalo is going to be second in this division. Um, getting into some individual players that we might have good vibes about. Oh. Uh, David Montgomery is in that category sure. for me. The way that this team has treated him in the preseason certainly seems like from week one, unlike my view of Miles Sanders, which might take some time, from week one, David Montgomery looks like he's going to make an impact. If the kind of uh, narrative street, Kareem Hunt comps, what Matt Nagy's actually looking for in a workhorse back come true. You've got incredible upside, and there's been nothing this preseason you know, to dissuade us from thinking David Montgomery is both a draft day value and a very high upside guy. So he, he'd be one name that I bring up. I would bring up Tyler Lockett. Yeah, Good, you are feeling goodness real gracious. nice about Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett is, one, a great player. Two, the entire passing. So he better be great because he's the Seattle it. Seahawks. I mean, it was it was insane watching this game. Obviously, DK Metcalf is hurt. David Morris hurt. Jerron Brown is as good as is Jerron Brown. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where, let's say the Seahawks don't pass a lot and they're near the bottom of the barrel in passing yards, which probably won't happen, being at the bottom of the passing yards. But even if that happens, just market share wise. Tyler Lockett is going to get his on an every single game basis. They're handing the ball off to him. They're throwing him screens. Then they're launching him long. All game long, he was just wide open because he's also a great route runner. So, I, I mean, Tyler Lockett has all the good vibes. All the all the tingles are happening for me. And, I, you know, it's a very similar uh, narrative to D.D. Westbrook. You know, another guy who's like, I just think the competition – around him your fantasy is, sense is, is tingling. not at his level so it's like you've got these two wide receivers on these teams that people aren't really all about in fantasy you know you're not loving the Seahawks passing game or the Jaguars passing game but when there's one guy who's so clearly better than all the other receivers there he's going to end up with a high target share and just a, a, a higher consistency f for those reasons is there anybody you want to bring up, Mike, or should we talk about some bad vibe guys? Just Sony Michelle. 
Uh, Absolutely. The, the vibes of, of his preseason have been unbelievably positive, especially when you juxtapose, juxtapose them against his early offseason, which was another knee surgery, even though it was a scope. I, For my running backs, I don't like medical tools going mm-hmm. inside of their knees. And he's had so many knee problems, but he he looked incredible. All these whispers from the bushes that they're going to get him more involved in the passing game. Sony Michelle, who went from you're drafting him at near his ceiling when he was slipping into the second round, and it was like he has to perform at a certain level, to now in the fourth round. I mean, we've I've been in some drafts where I've gotten an unbelievable value on Sony Michelle because people you still have you still have that stigma of the Patriots running back where we don't know when he's going to go off, but Sony Michelle was so heavily utilized last year. And with everything they're talking about featuring him this year, the vibes have been great. I would just throw out one more name, and I know you won't mind it, Andy, but Chris Carson has just looked dominant. I mean, every time they hand the ball off, he's running out for targets. You've seen a little bit of that in the preseason. When you hear the coach speak of, like, we want to get him more involved in the passing game, but then you see him constantly leaking up for targets, whether or not he he you know received the target in preseason – definitely good vibes going on with Chris Carson. All right, let's move on to some bad vibes. I want to bring up the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, it's, I just feel very uncomfortable up and down the board with the 49ers. I had the the Pettis My Guy retraction. The Pettis Pivot. The, the Pettis Pivot, as it's been. <laughs> it will live in infamy. Can you find that on Wikipedia, the, the great Pettis Pivot? I still feel great about that pivot right now. Um Pettis played into the late into the game. He, after after the game concluded, it was like, yeah, he's earning. He a was ro- still playing. He's earning a role on the team. We're all heading in. Pettis, you stay out there. Hit the jugs, everyone. We got to huddle up. No, not you. <laughs> yeah, you're playing the fifth quarter, Dante. But right now, it just looks rougher than I expected. Pettis hasn't stepped up, established himself as a one. Jimmy G has had a rough preseason and camp. Jarek McKinnon is banged up. Trent Taylor. Went down. He's hurt. Is it Goodwin or Pettis or Debo or Richie James or Jalen Hurd or Kendrick Bourne on a week-to-week basis? I went back and looked at the box scores for the five big wins, right? Jimmy G's coming out party at the end of 2017 before the ACL tear. He distributes the ball to a ton of different places. At that time, you know, Goodwin was receiving the, the most targets from Jimmy G, but, you know, it was Lewis Murphy. It was, it was uh, you know, a ton of different options in the offense. So, uh, to me, it's an unpredictable problem here. If you have to kind of say you feel confident about somebody, it's Coleman and Brita, but even then you don't have a backfield that's like perfectly defined for you from a snap count, carry count perspective. What happens if McKinnon does get reactivated? Like, I don't know. My vibes around the 49ers right now are very uncomfortable vibes. Well, yeah, I do, I'm not comfortable with they're, it. They're bad on both sides of the ball, which when you're talking about the vibes for a team and how things are going emotionally for them, that matters. I mean, they've dealt with a lot of defensive injuries this preseason. So, I mean, the, the vibes in San Francisco are certainly not what you're hoping going into the season. My bad vibes are the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, you know, you, you've got all the hype, the early off season, I'm, we're going to sign the young gun, Sean McVay uh, disciple, Zach Taylor, get him in here. Yeah, I know he's barely been like a part-time offensive coordinator, but he's young and he's been around Sean McVay. Mm. We've got Joe Mixon. We've got AJ Green. We've got Tyler Boyd. We're going to make this an offense and light the field on fire. But <laughs> seems very dangerous. But the, yes. that's how we're going to score. <laughs> but here's the problem: they've lost two significant pieces of their offensive line. They've lost their best offensive player in AJ Green. The, uh, Andy Dalton has looked as bad as ever this preseason. His backup looks better than he does, which is never a good thing right now for a team. What happens if Are you talking about the Giants? No, I'm talking about the Bengals. I, but uh, yes, also thank also you. there. Um, so the vibes right now for Cincinnati, they scare, like I still, I mean, Joe Mixon is such a talented running back. He's fast. He's electric. He can get the edge. He can catch passes without thought. He's, he's very good. 
And so you that's why he's in the first round. But, man, I have a lot of hesitation drafting a running back that looks like he doesn't have an offensive line or a quarterback or an offense. It's really rough. We've seen that in years past with talented backs like David Johnson and Todd Gurley. Uh, Tyler Boyd seems to be safe right now. I, I, I'm fine with his value. Um, but I mean, I, I just, I'm getting the, I'm getting the bad vibes from the Bengals. I expect them to be really competing for last place, uh, by the end of the season and, and maybe looking towards who's the quarterback of the future. You know, Dalton and green came in the league together and are they leaving them, together? They might be leaving oh, together. Oh no. Somewhere soon. So you think they might get watered, like the, the whole Bengals team? <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, Mike, to bad put out vibes. The fire. Yeah. All right. Not that fantasy players were coming into the season hoping and expecting for a lot of things, but my bad vibe team is the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to start at the top, where all off season, the training camp, all the hype was. Josh Rosen looks terrible. Ryan Fitzpatrick has this. He seems to have the starting quarterback job locked up. And last year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Ryan Fitzpatrick, one of his best abilities is to just let the ball rip and let his fast receivers do the thing. It, we've talked many times about last year, if you combine Fitzpatrick and Jameis Winston, Tampa Bay had the second highest scoring fantasy quarterback in all of football. So Ryan Fitzpatrick was interesting because – he might bring these wide receivers some value just of, of how much he hyper-targets that one position. And he, we've seen guys years and years and years have value with Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's not – now we don't know. Like at, I'm talking as of two days ago, Brian Flores, Dolphins coach, says, eh, it could go either way. That's – when you're at the – preseason week three has ended and you don't know who your starting quarterback is – that is a absolute panic alarm. Then you throw in, okay, Kenyon Drake got hurt. Kalen Balazs looks like he's going to be just this super sneaky value. Allegedly, he's tearing it up. He's, he's dominating the Miami defense. He's looking great. Gets his shot to shine, and he's just a gust of wind is knocking him over. I mean, he he there's no balance. If he doesn't get a wide hole and get going like, Fred Flintstone feet, he, you're, you're going to knock him down and he's going to do nothing for this team. Kenny Stills, who I've, I've loved Kenny Stills forever. I thought he, I think he's a good wide receiver. They're shopping him allegedly. I mean, there's just, there's so many areas where I thought there might be sneaky value for Miami and they have all imploded. Well, it's ironic because the two good vibe teams you both brought up were yeah. division mates. And then the With other the one is the Patriots. Yeah. So you got the Patriots, the Jets, the Bills looking better. Yeah, the Bellage was on my – I mean, I, I got a couple yeah. names written down here. Kalen Bellage has got the bad vibes right now. Um, I guess this is proportional to Chris Carson, but Rashad Penny's Yeah, vibes Penny's on my list. Are, are on the way down just because it, it seems like this team – did you yeah. write down Penny I've too? I've got Penny yeah. on my list. So uh, it doesn't mean that he's not going to be – productive in some fashion. I just think my expectations are going down with him. And then Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, my my vibes are That's down on Derrick call. Henry. Marcus Mariota looks atrocious. If they make a transition to, to Tannehill, you know, I, I just feel very uncomfortable with Derrick Henry on a team that I don't know how it's going to go for them. At the beginning of this offseason, I felt a lot better about Tennessee. I know their defense has improved. But you, you, you need to win games for Derrick Henry to win you fantasy games, if well, that makes sense. He does not score points yes. in, in games they lose at all. It goes from 80-something yards a game to 50. It goes from touchdowns to none. I mean, he's a 50-yard, no-touchdown running back in games they With lose. With no receptions. And, With no receptions. And the thing is, is he needs space to work. Once you get him going with a head of steam, him good, luck, good luck tackling him. But the problem is, right now, part of the reason Marcus Mariota has looked so bad is because the offensive line – for the Titans has looked terrible. And then the first four weeks of the season, you're losing one of the best left tackles in the league in Taylor Lewan. I mean... Well, Ryan Tannehill's looked really good, though. Yes. That's the funny thing. I mean, you're not wrong. Against but backups. Sure. Well, uh, you know, Mariota took three... Had three throws and came off the field, and then Tannehill walked into the same roster and, and has looked very good in the preseason. So it's just one of those things where things could 
turn quicker in Tennessee than we hope. Right. Uh, AJ, the reports so far on AJ Brown have been kind of mixed. Corey Davis is Corey Davis. I just don't know if they have enough firepower in this offense unless Mariota takes a step forward, which he's coming off a really, really rough injury riddled season. We haven't seen the best of Marcus Mariota since, you know, a year and a half ago when he was giving you consistent games, mostly due to his legs. Uh, so it just feels bad. Yeah. I would give uh, bad vibes as well to uh, all, all preseason long. And I it, it's preseason. They're not necessarily running their scheme, yada, yada. But uh, to a man, I feel like the Atlanta Falcons offensive line has just been beaten senseless. Every time I watch Matt Ryan drop back, and and this and he was, you know, to his credit, he was still dropping dimes out there, but he was running for his life or taking sacks. It was it was not good, and uh, that was a team I was really excited to look at how their offensive line had improved. I've heard people from Atlanta say, "Oh, don't don't be worried," and I've heard people say, "I'm really worried." Uh, and bad vibes, of course, still to the holding out running backs. It yes. doesn't sound great for Melvin Gordon, and we now have. Uh, let's see, about an hour ago, another quote from Zeke. Uh-oh. Who says, I love playing for the Dallas Cowboys. I love the organization, my teammates. I do want to be a Cowboy for the rest of my life, and uh -huh. hopefully that's a possibility. But even Emmett Smith, the greatest running back ever, ended up going to play a couple years for another organization. He <laughs> Zeke's, Zeke's throwing counter punches to Jerry. This is ugly, man. This is why you can't get caught up, in my opinion, with CBA speculation about these situations anymore. We've been through it with Lev, Gordon, Zeke. The situations are very different from a contractual situation. They are not different whatsoever from a emotional, human, pride, entitlement situation. And that's not to say, that's not me saying, Zeke is the only person at fault in this situation. He's just trying to I get just the bag, that no man. Matter, when, no matter who you are, what comes into account here is, is like, I play for a limited amount of time. This has been brought to the forefront with the Andrew Luck situation. You know, these players get beat up. They have a very small window to do this. So they're going to flex with the levers they have. They're going to use public pressure in the ways that they can. And they're not going to relent just because fantasy analysts tell them that they'll be in a certain you know contractual boat next year it doesn't matter because when a resolution comes all of those fines all of those circumstances they all wash away or they move on so i was going to take your temperature mike because we've been very optimistic about zeke's situation being different than the others you know that's all i've heard elsewhere still expect him to play but i mean he went first in our league of record draft on sunday uh, if if I draft Zeke, and man, it's it's getting shakier and shakier. Unfortunately, that that's the worst part of these situations is we just have essentially a gut feeling of what we've seen other running backs do. If I have if I take Zeke uh, among the power four players, I am reaching for Tony Pollard. I'm going to secure myself. I'm going to try and buy. That's really those, smart. Buy wins at the beginning of the season. I, I don't think Zeke is gone the entire season where I think Melvin Gordon will be gone for the majority of it. But, man, this it, it just it just keeps getting worse and worse for the Zeke holdout. Yeah, if, if you do in, ensure that you grab Zeke and you grab Pollard, then you, sh you should be fine because Pollard's going to dominate while Zeke is out. All right, we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. If you go to footclangiveaway.com, you can win an Alvin Kamara jersey. It's brought to you by Pristine Auction. They have hundreds of daily auctions. One of the ways that you can enter to win, signing up, registering a free account at pristineauction.com using the code BALLERS. You get $5 towards any future memorabilia purchase. So if you've got a favorite player, a favorite team, uh, maybe it's a vintage jersey. Maybe it's a pop culture piece. Whatever it is, um, you can get some real special deals on there. A Curtis Samuel jersey, $58 yesterday. Every day you can find new and exciting auctions, so check them out at pristineauction.com. Um, they've been great partners uh, for a long time. So that's it for today's episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more 
good vibes than bad, I think. I think we'll bring some good vibes tomorrow. Absolutely. We will see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. We love you all. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast is brought to you by Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable men's jeans ever made. No exaggeration. Do your legs a favor and head to Muggsy.com to grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That is M-U-G-S-Y dot com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off your pair of Muggsy jeans.